Hello and welcome to the program. And guess what? Have I got some disturbing news for you. Because when it comes to the coverage of the war in the Middle East, mainstream news outlets are really, really biased. Yeah, I know. Big surprise here. I'm talking about more, though, than just the usual stuff that comes from the fact that so many journalists are products of loony left training colleges where distaste for Israel and the West is almost a graduation requirement. No, what, what I'm going to bring you today goes much, much further than that. How much further? Let's find out as we go Busting the Narrative. Well, the issue of how the media covers the war in the Middle East has certainly been front and center here, and the news isn't good. I mean, first there was the story about the New York Times rehiring a reporter who praised Hitler. Check this out. Journalist, and I use that word here advisedly, Suleiman Hiji posted in 2012 with a picture of Hitler, how great you are, in Arabic, alongside a photoshopped image of the German dictator supposedly taking a selfie before it was unearthed last year when pro-Israel outlets called out the New York Times for hiring anti-Semitic journalists as freelancers. Amazingly, a New York Times spokesperson defended the outlet's decision to bring the guy back, saying, eh, well, you know, we reviewed problematic social media posts by Mr. Hidgey when they first came to light in 2022 and took a variety of actions to ensure he understood our concerns and could adhere to our standards if he wished to do freelance work for us in the future, the rep said. Yes, you can just imagine that meeting. Okay, mate, no more Hitler posts. We got it? Sweet. The New York Times also recently saw one of its reporters resign after she signed a letter in support of Gaza that accused Israel of war crimes. This violated the neutrality policies, yeah, I know, they have them at the New York Times, uh, that they supposedly adhere to. Author Ashley Rinsberg has summed up this bias in a great interview. Have a look at this. The bias is just, it's so obvious. It's no longer cloaked. It's no longer hidden. We all know it for what it is. Israelis see the same exact thing. I lived in Israel for most of the past 20 years, um, working there, raising my family. Along the way, I started paying more attention to the media and how it covers Israel, but not just Israel. I mean, broad swath of topics that we see clear and obvious bias. So I had written a book about the New York Times and how it's misreporting, which was always driven by an agenda. But... That's just a little bit of bias. Nothing, though, is as bad as this. And this is just breaking news, but according to a report by HonestReporting.com, Gaza-based photojournalists were embedded, yes, embedded with the Hamas terrorists who committed the October 7 atrocities in Israel. Here is footage of this reporter, Gazan freelancer Hassan Esley, in front of a burning Israeli tank, not identified as a member of the press. And the connections don't stop there. Here is a picture that apparently shows that same photographer with Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar. And this is just one reporter. There were possibly a half dozen more there, too. And as the honest reporting report knows, just in time... They were there to set foot in Israeli territory and take more tank pictures. Photographers Ali Mahmoud and Hatam Ali were positioned to get photos of the horrific abductions of Israelis into Gaza. Mahmoud also captured this pickup truck carrying the body of German-Israeli Shani Luke, and Ali also got several shots of abductees being kidnapped into Gaza, according to this report. Now, this is shocking, and there are more cases like this, but you get the idea. As the report notes, this raises a series of ethical questions. What were these photographers doing there so early on and with what would have ordinarily been a quiet Saturday morning? Was this coordinated with Hamas? Well, I think we know the answer to that. Did their failure to notify anyone of the attacks amount to complicity with evil? 
Did the photojournalists who freelance for other media like CNN and the New York Times notify these outlets that something was going on? To quote HonestReporting.com, judging from the pictures of lynching, kidnapping, and storming of an Israeli kibbutz, it seems like the border has been breached not only physically, but also journalistically. Thanks for watching. I am James Morrow. And to support this channel, please like, share, and subscribe below. And I'll see you next time for more Busting the Narrative. Bye-bye.